for two and a half years, I've been using an international dating website. I'm interested in girls from Ukraine. I've been to Ukraine twice. The first time I went to Ukraine, I met three women. We didn't click. So I came back home, got back on the website, found a good looking lady named Natalia. When I met Natalia online, we seemed to hit it off. Everything from our jobs to what we like in looks, music, pretty much everything. And she's hot. I wanted to meet Natalia, so I went back to Ukraine. When I got to Ukraine, Natalia had to leave the country for two weeks to Turkey. She stood me up. I told Natalia, now you play by Carl's rules. You learn English and you pay your own flight over here. Natalia's gonna come visit me two times last year. And she found out her passport expired. Next time, the tax inspector says, you don't have your taxes up to date. I've offered her small amounts of money and she never accepted. Natalia speaks Russian and I've been studying to learn how to speak Russian. I can say things like, I would like something to eat. Ya hai teleba stonya but weep it. Ya layublu Natalia. I love Natalie. <laughs> For two years now, the only way Natalie and I can communicate is through the agency with a girl named Susan translating. I pay $5 per letter. I've written 215 letters back and forth with Natalie. My total of the two trips was $6,000. My whole family thinks I'm crazy to uh, be pursuing a woman 30 years younger than me. They are not looking for love with him. They are looking for a ticket to the United States. I think it's fine. If he wants to meet people in Ukraine, do your thing. I have seen enough Dr. Phil catfish episodes. He sits in a cubicle in Nigeria. No, he does not. His hair is sticking up out of the picture. Whether he's getting drained financially, I know he's getting drained emotionally. My mother will say to my dad, oh, Carl, have you talked to your teenagers recently? To me, it's kind of a fantasy that he's gonna see unicorns and rainbows and lollipops and his life is gonna be the best it's ever been. I believe she's real. The agency says she's real. Her interpreter claims she's real. The way that I look at it is that he is spending my inheritance, chasing a dream that's not gonna happen. You are out there. <laughs> are, she, she's out there. She's a space cadet. She's a space she, cadet. Natalie's going to take her inheritance or hers or anybody else's. I've already discussed with her two years ago, if we were to ever get married, she says, I totally agree with you that you should have a prenuptial agreement. Your kids should get what you've earned. There's no reason that I should get any. I don't deserve it. And she said, I agree that once we're married, what we earn together is what they get. And I said, you'd have to sign this prenuptial to say everything goes to them. I said, I have a will for my kids. She said, that's fine. She says, I don't want you to offer me money. I don't want you to send me money. She's told me that at least 10 times, at least. <laughs> so it's not like these people that blow their 500 grand and say, eh, I thought he was my lover. No. <laughs> she have a sexy voice? <coughs> I don't know, I haven't talked to her. <laughs> Sexy voice, because you're the hot chick. <laughs> Never talked oh, to her? Great. No. Yeah. Because she's only learning English. She takes two classes a week in English. You've never talked to her in Russian? I've never talked to her. You never heard her say anything in Russian? Not a single word. <laughs>